What is neocolonialism? Let's take Ethiopia. It has 120 million hectares of land, 80 million people, a favorable political environment, excellent climatic conditions for farming, and sufficient water. What more could anyone want? Recently, this area has been making big money, but not for the Ethiopians. Asian investors are sweeping through Africa to secure land, harvests and revenues for themselves. Let's take this Indian, for instance. He leased over 400,000 hectares from the government, an area almost as large as Dubai, to grow this, this and this. He negotiates with the government, suppliers and customers. In Ethiopia, the conditions are ideal, low lease prices and cheap labor. The Africans lack the necessary know-how, which means the Indians are cultivating the land in Ethiopia using American tractors. Here, all the land belongs to the state. Over the next few years, the government plans to permanently lease 3 million hectares of land to investors, and that in a country that prides itself on having never been colonized. It is ironic that foreign investors are making profits growing foodstuffs in a country where every second person is considered undernourished. But who will benefit the most from these natural resources? The investors? Or will it bring wealth and knowledge to the Ethiopian people? The potential for development is enormous, but so are the risks. The new race for the fertile land of this continent is already in full swing.